Member for Light. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would like to uh, rise and speak in support of the motion and make it very clear that I oppose the amendment. And I'll speak to the amendment first before I get to the area which I want to do to support the motion, but also raise an example of where some really bad practice by a local council is actually impeding our, our efforts to improve housing in this country, and in particularly my community. Uh, Mr Speaker, as indicated, I'll be supporting the motion because I think the motion itself outlines what this government is trying to do in to address the homelessness issue and housing generally. Uh, the, the, the amendment talks about the wonderful things the Liberal government did. Well, I, I'll speak from my electorate, from the base of my electorate. I don't know what happens elsewhere, but I certainly can talk about what happened in, in my electorate. Uh, I remember attending uh, a, uh, a meeting, a consultation in the Barossa, uh, where the, there was discussions about how the, the, minister wanted to, the former minister wanted to introduce a new housing strategy. And, you know, there was, I got a glossy publication after that process, all these wonderful words, and the only thing missing from the strategy was actually saying, this is what we're going to actually do to make this thing better. There's a whole range of uh, parenthood statements, all look very glossy, and it didn't commit to one additional house, not one additional house. That was the Liberal Party's housing strategy to, to address homelessness. Now, as the minister said, uh, the current minister said, yes, the new alliance uh, system appears to be working okay, uh, but they can only hand out or help people put in homes which exist, and the Liberal Party did nothing. The Liberal, Marshall Liberal government did nothing to actually improve or address that issue in terms of additional housing. And in fact, if um, the presentation to my office an indication, it got extremely worse during that period, and it's still, sadly, still sadly, probably the number one issue in my electorate is people come to my office who are homeless for a whole range of reasons and some really dire circumstances. One thing they did do in my elect electorate to help the homelessness service, the Liberal Party, the Liberal Marshall Government, was close the local housing SA office. Now, that was quite an achievement, to actually close down a service to help homeless people who were homeless or seeking to get home. That's what th one thing the Liberal Government did do. They closed it. Uh, and they're closer to a time when we actually didn't have train services either. So the people who are actually the most vulnerable in our community have to actually find some way to get to Elizabeth, which is the closest office. And in fact, on one occasion, I happened to be outside the uh, housing estate office, which had closed, and there was a mother there with her children who had walked right across the town to come to this office for service, and it didn't exist. It didn't exist. Uh, and when you made inquiries about it, they said, oh, well, it's about COVID. Everything, actually, there's a whole period everything could be blamed on COVID. And then COVID ended, but the office hasn't, hasn't, hasn't re reopened under their time. So what we did, we did some, something practical. We actually, actually gave an opportunity to one of the homelessness services to provide an outreach service through my electorate office. So they come there regularly. People can actually stay, stay in Gawla and, and access homelessness services through my electorate office. And sadly, they are very busy. Now, why is homelessness rough sleep and homelessness important. Mr Speaker, having a home is core to who we are as human beings. It's in addition to the issues around safety, et cetera, et cetera. We all, if you like, help define ourselves by where we live, the home we live in, et cetera, because the place central to our being, it's a place where we, we obviously spend time with our families. That's a time we spend places with friends. It's a place where we, we feel safe. It's a place where we belong and interact with our communities. And when you don't have a home, you don't have a place to spend time with family. You don't have a place to spend with friends. You don't have a place where you call safe. And what I do know, the rough sleepers in Gawler, who sadly is the worst I've ever seen. 10 years ago, we had none. We now have about 45, 50 people in Gawler alone who actually who are rough sleepers. Some of them come from outside the town of Gawler because it's safer to sleep rough in Gawler than other communities near us. Uh, so they, they don't feel safe. And it's interesting to note how uh, they actually sleep during the daytime because that's when it's safer to sleep because they can be seen. At night time when you're a rough sleeper, you're in danger of being... Uh, uh, your, your safety is, is actually compromised. And you don't belong. You can't access services. And the simple things, you can't have showers, you can't wash your clothing, all those basic things we take for granted homeless people don't have. So when I hear comments like, 
one of the former speakers, how wonderful job they did, well, that wasn't the reality in my electorate. That wasn't the reality in my electorate. And the other reality was, during COVID, we were able to find and resolve the homelessness issue for the city of Adelaide, not in the suburbs and not in country areas. The government of the day forgot about the suburbs and forgot about the country areas. Now, Mr Speaker, in a, in a minute, few minutes I've got to remain. I think it's very important that, as some of the speakers have said, we need to work together to resolve this housing crisis in this, in this nation. And I would have thought that every government agency, planning authority, instrumentality would be doing their bit to make sure there's no barriers of getting people into a home. Sadly, that's not the case on my council, the Gawler Council. And I'll give an example because I had to go twice to appear before them recently to argue, for, uh, to argue on behalf of seven home buyers who were having their titles held up for over 18 months by council's dispute with a developer. 18 months. It, it, is, it is actually just quite disgraceful. And I'll explain why it's disgraceful. It has added almost a half a million dollars to the cost for these home buyers in terms of contract, contract renewals, uh, additional rent, uh, uh, and also some of them actually lost their first home owners, first home builders grant as well. Almost a half a million dollars. Even if you don't take into account the additional money they have to borrow to pay off their loans, it is quite a disgraceful amount. So, Mr Speaker, so they had the dispute with this developer, and I must confess, on this occasion, you know, developers don't have a good name, generally speaking, on this occasion, the actual home buyers actually sided with the developer. They could see what the council was doing. The council was trying to extract or renegotiate unilaterally an agreement about contributions, which had been signed by the parties. And they thought they would hold these seven home buyers to ransom, hoping they would actually turn onto the turn onto the uh, uh, land uh, home buyers to fork more money out of the council. Last week, the council accepted an offer from the developer. That offer, financially, was the same put to them 12 months ago. The same offer. And the only thing which changed the council's mind was political pressure placed by the, the, um, the, home, um, the home buyers, uh, myself and other people who advocated on their behalf. It is absolutely appalling behaviour that a council could actually do such a thing. Not only has it had an impact on these seven home buyers, and I'll explain how, but it means there are seven people who are renting when they don't have to rent to make space for another seven people who could be renting. So there's a, if you like, there's a whole chain of damage and pain caused by this council decision to not do that. And the worst thing is, we all make mistakes. Previous government made mistakes, I make mistakes, I'll probably make one every day. The reality is, the council had the height to say they've done nothing wrong. They couldn't understand why, on the one hand, they'd accepted an offer just last week, which is the same financial officer for offer as 12 months ago, and caused pain to these seven home buyers to the tune of over half a million dollars, and they saw nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. So this dispute, what has it done? Well, it's, it's not a victimless decision made by council. It has actually privatised the hardship for these things. It's fact cost shifting. Uh, what, uh, this it actually also has robbed these people of the joy and excitement from building their first home. Now, building a home is, is a pretty tough gig at the best of times, and when you get a council who holds up your your project by 12 to 18 months and costs you tens of thousands of dollars more, it does take off the gloss of actually moving into a new home. So there's a whole range of direct and indirect costs. Um, so these are real people who've experienced real pain by this council's inability to resolve an issue with a developer who was a willing party. And it was interesting to note, I understand that when the, the lawyers for the council went to the developer recently, they said, is the previous offer from some time ago still on the, on the table? And the developer said yes, and the matter was resolved. Sadly, Mr, Mr. Speaker, we all should all be doing our bit to make sure we get people into homes as quickly as we can. And for this reason alone, I think, come these elections, the people of Gawler deserve a better council.